Exercise 13. We begin by selecting a new part file. If you have an ANSI inch, go to that. If not, proceed with the standard part file. Make sure you set up in tools and options that should be set to inches and the ANSI standard. Very first step is to select the front plane and start a sketch on it. So find your pencil tool on the right and click on it. We're going to first draw the base of the bottle. We're going to be doing a loft in this case, so we'll draw a base profile and start from approximately about two inches out on the left hand side aligned with the origin and drag a line across. It should be approximately four inches in total length. The next tool that we're going to use is the spline tool. So find the spline tool on the right hand side. Glide up to the corner on the right, click and drag out a little line at a slight angle. Click again, drag another one. Just uh, shortly a distance away from the last and then drag across after you click that time and this is going to be the larger side of the bottle on the left so make it a little bit larger area and then get close to the or uh, to the left hand side click again and then find the end click one more time and hit escape what we want to do next is make sure that we have a relationship or a, a tangent condition with this spline at the very end. We could actually use center lines to do this. We could click on the center line tool, glide up to this end point, drag out a line, and you will see some inferences appear, these little yellow dashed lines. Follow the tangent one that goes and follows the tangency with the curve, which should turn red when you align to it. Release it. Do the same on the other side. Drag off a line, find the tangency condition, and when the, the spline turns red, you know you're aligned to it and release it. Now what we want to do with that is then we could take and select, hit escape, then select one of the center lines, make it vertical with the relationship on the left hand side, select the other side, select vertical as well. This will give us a nice smooth transition since we are creating one half of the bottle and this is the base of the bottle. There are dimensions given in the book and you could follow those if you want to make it exactly like the bottle that I have. Otherwise you could kind of just use your own discretion and design your own bottle this way. I'm going to click on the spline. When I click on the spline I could actually see the points that were used to generate the spline. This is a polynomial spline. It is not a NURB and uh, basically the mathematics involved with that generate different types of geom geometric conditions. In this case I want to smooth this out just a little bit. You'll notice that there's little arrowheads on the splines when you, the spline points when you click on them. This enables you to adjust what they call the weight of the curve. In this case, I'm going to just drag this one over on the left-hand side a little bit more, again, to smooth this out. And at this point, I will just hit Rebuild, because I'm finished. The next thing I want to do is I want to go into an isometric view, and then I'm going to drag off an additional plane offset from the front plane. The way I do this is I select the front plane from the feature tree, I hold Control, I grab the thin green line that makes up the plane, the front plane, and I drag it forward. I could release control at any time and continue dragging my plane out. I want to make this approximately, or set this to approximately a distance of 8 inches. Hit enter after you type in 8. And we now have an offset plane, 8 inches. Now, in this case, it might be a little high for my bottle, so what I'm going to do, if you want to edit this, you could double click on the plane, one that's floating in space, 
and reduce the dimension by double clicking on it and typing in a new value. In this case I'm going to try 6. And maybe actually 5 if I want to see how that looks. I like that a little bit better. I'm making a bit smaller bottle than what the lesson dictates. Which is fine. I'm going to go ahead and select the plane now and I'm going to click on the pencil icon to start a sketch. And now I'm going to go normal 2. Or to the front view. Okay, from here now I'm going to make the top of the bottle. The top of the bottle is going to actually be a smaller so and offset slightly because this is going to have a, this is going to be a bottle with a handle on it. So I'm going to select the line tool and glide over to the left the thicker portion and draw a line across here. Again you could follow the dimensions that are given in the book. I'm going to take the spline tool and glide up and continue to do something similar to what I did last time where I just draw a couple points on the one side and then a couple on the other. And then hit escape when you're done. Again I'm going to adjust these a little bit, get them to where I, I like the appearance, and that looks good to me. One last thing, make sure you select your center lines and drag off tangent center lines. In this case I am not getting an inference, so I'm going to try it one more time. Since I didn't get an inference, I have no way of uh, telling uh, uh, other than to select the geometry, what type of relationship that it automatically established. In this case, it automatically established a vertical relationship, which I really don't want. So I'm going to delete that by right-clicking on it. Now I will proceed to hold control and select the center line and the spline. Now I could force a tangent relationship, which is found on the left side. And if I want, I could adjust it as well. I could click and drag this out a little bit. Um, actually, I do want that to stay in vertical, so we'll leave that vertical. And here, I will add a vertical relationship. So if you left it vertical, that's fine. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit Rebuild now. Now, what I've constructed here are my profiles for my bottle. I have the bottom and I have the top, at least one half of it. Now, what I want to do is create geometry connecting these guide curves that will be used to con control the geometry as it transitions from one end to the other in a loft. So I will select the top plane and start a sketch and I will use the spline tool and I'll do the front of the bottle first which is on the left hand side here. I'll click on this corner here, drag off just a couple points. This is going to be a rather smooth transition between the two ends. So just uh, one point in the center, and then the two endpoints, of course, and then I'm going to hit Escape. And if we look at that from this perspective, it looks pretty good. We're going to leave that alone. Now I'm going to hit Rebuild. The reason I'm rebuilding is to exit the sketch, because now for the second guide curve, which is going to be on the other side, it needs to have its own sketch. It cannot be incorporated. You cannot combine sketches. So again, we'll select the top plane from the feature tree, click on the pencil icon to start a sketch and now I'll take my spline tool and I'll start at the bottom and click and drag off a curve click again and just eyeball a couple little handle se sections here a little grip that we're developing get to the end and hit escape If we select it, we can see the spline points. There is, under Tools Options, the ability to view spline points in general. Okay, in this case, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the top view, where we could select down here, we could find top. And then I could smooth this out even further. When you're looking at it as a perspective, or an isometric view, it's rather difficult to tell exactly what you have. So this is not a bad idea to go ahead and rotate this around a little bit. 
and smooth out the geometry. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to hit rebuild to exit that sketch. Now what I can do is proceed with the loft. The loft is found on the left hand side. Select, select lofted boss base. And the first thing it looks for with the salmon colored boxes are the profiles. Click on the bottom profile and the top and you'll see a straight transition currently. What we have to do, we have to apply the guide curves. So we have to select the guide curves box on the left hand side here. It's currently white. When we select it, it will turn to the salmon color, enabling us to input geometry by selecting it. So now we could click on this curve here and the curve on the right and it constrains the geometry to that. So now we could just go ahead and hit the green check mark or hit the right mouse button which is OK. Another thing we could do after we have our solid here is we could hide this plane. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right click on it and select hide. We no longer need to see that at this time. Okay, what I'd like to start to do next is to apply fillet at the bottom edge. Now when you're creating freeform geometry, you could put a standard fillet in. And if we do that, we could select the edge, go to the fillet tool, and apply a, in this case, maybe we want a 250,000.25 radius. And hit the green check mark. And apply that. Now, it might look just fine to most people, but if we go and we analyze it further, we could go to View, Display, and find Curvature. Curvature will tell us, or show us with a visible, vis visible spectrum of colors, the transitions. And whenever you see a harsh transition, that indicates that there's not a lot of continuity or there's no curvature continuity there or very little. In this case we have a straight radius of 0.25. If we glide our pointer over it we could actually see the feedback versus if we glide over the multicolored section here of the body transition you can see the tr it changes as we glide over it, the radius of curvature. What we want to do is we want to match this up so it's a bit better transition. First of all, we'll go to View and Modify and Disable. I'm sorry, View, Display, and Turn Off Curvature. And now let's take a look at this. Let's um, delete that fillet by selecting it. You could click on it and then hit the Delete key on your keyboard and confirm the deletion. And now we'll go ahead and we'll go back to Fillet. This time we will select a face fillet. There's two face sets that you have to be aware of. We can leave the radius of 0.25, but we'll select this is the first face set. Then click in the second face set, which is down below here in, on the left, change it to the salmon color, and select the base. And now we're not finished yet. If we take a look under fillet options here, hit the little arrow drag this down, you'll find an option Curvature Continuous. Select Curvature Continuous and in your book it describes what a co Curvature Continuous fillet is. It essentially is, is it not a direct, it's a, trans, a smoother transition. Uh, in this case because my geometry is a bit smaller than my drawing I'm going to change this to 0 0.2 and that allows the fill to go in. And at first glance it looks pretty normal, but let's take a look at it if I go to display under curvature. And now you can see an actual smooth transition versus a harsh transition. It utilizes a spline as its curvature instead of an actual radius. And this is what they call curvature continuity. There's three levels. There's G0, G1, and G2. G0 is a straight transition like a chamfer for example or 90 degree uh, edge. The second type is a tangent tangency and basically that's just a radius 
um, with uh, up against some edges. And then the third type, G2, is actually curvature continuity, which uses spline geometry. This is industrial designers, for example, are very interested in doing this because it makes smoother transitions. Go back to view, display, and deactivate curvature. The next thing we're going to do is put a fillet up at the top edge, and you can put a standard fillet or practice the curvature continuity again. And now what I want to do before I go any further here is put the details on the bottle. There's in the manual that doesn't go through this, but I will show you how it's done. Select the front, the top plane, and start a sketch, and go normal too. Proceed to draw using a spline, or you could use arcs, a label recess on the bottle. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and just draw a spline at the top, and then a straight line across the bottom. And then I could add the sketch fillet at the bottom. And we'll make these approximately 0.2. Now I'll proceed to hit Rebuild. Now right now if I were to try and make a recess I might have a bit of an issue because I selected and dropped this in on the top plane. We actually want, if we're going to make a recess, it needs to be out a plane that's outside of the bottle. So this is how we can do this. We could select Actually, take your rollback bar at the very bottom of the feature tree. Make sure you get the little hand that appears for your pointer. Hold the left mouse button down and drag that little yellow and black line above the sketch 5. Now we could click on the top plane in the feature tree. Hold the control key down and drag a new plane up above the bottle. Make sure that it's floating above. It could be any distance away. It does not make a difference. In this case, I'll just make it even two inches. Now I'll proceed to drag the rollback bar down on the lower left. And my sketch that's there, I want to transplant onto this surface. Now I could copy and paste it, but there's another thing you can do. You could right click on the sketch, and there's an option to edit sketch plane. Here's a little trick for you. By selecting edit sketch plane, you could select the new plane to replace the old one, hit the green check mark, and it will now have transferred your whole sketch onto the new plane that you created. Now we could go ahead and proceed with the cut extrusion. So we go to extruded cut on the left side here. We'll select the sketch that we want to extrude. And what we want to do, instead of blind, is we want to go Offset from Surface. Offset from Surface allows us to select a surface to offset the cut up to. Currently, by the default settings, we see that it's set to 100 thousandths deep, the cut. We actually want that to be approximately um, 0.06. However, if we glide up to this, you can see that the offset is taking place above the surface of the part. If you have this occur, you hit the reverse offset checkbox below the 60 thousandths dimension you just put in. And that will reverse it and thus cutting the material 60 thousandths into the part following the contour of the surface. Hit the green check mark. And now you have a recess. You could proceed to hide the plane that you created by right clicking on it and finding hide. And from here, you could add some fillets. I will add some fillets at 30 thousandths. I'll select the whole face on the inside. And then I'll add another fillet on the outside here. And now we have our label recess. There is another feature that's in the book on the bottle here. It's a little cut. Let's see how that's done. To create the cut, you select the top plane. 
start a sketch. Go normal to and draw a guide curve as how you would like to see this cut take place inside the bottle. Let me have it go across here and maybe follow this geometry on the bottom a little bit. The next thing I want to do is I hit rebuild and I go to insert curve projected. When you select projected you have some options. You have sketch onto sketch. You might remember this. We actually use this in exercise 7 in the fundamentals class. And Now here I'm going to select sketch onto faces and the sketch you project is going to be the line, so select the line. The projection faces, you select in that box and select the surface of the bottle, the outside. And what you get is a little preview that's projecting that curve onto the surface of the bottle, just like you want to use. Now what you can do is you could select near the end of the curve, over here. select the pencil icon, it will automatically start a sketch perpendicular and a plane it generates at the same time perpendicular to that curve. Draw a circle on that point and you might find it difficult to grab that point. You actually can't. What you have to do, you have to draw the circle outside away from it and add a relationship later on of Pierce. So I'm going to hit escape, I'm going to hold control, select the center point of the circle, select the curve, and you'll find the Pierce relation on the lower left. Hit the green check mark. And you can rebuild. Now we want to have that curve cut through on this. Uh, 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 we want the circle to cut through on this curve. So we go to Insert, Cut, Sweep select the circle, select the guide curve, and hit the green check mark. And now you have the cut feature. Now we could hide this feature, the, the, the plane, and we could proceed to add some more fillets onto this geometry. So add a fillet on this inside edge here, and then one maybe over here. Hit the green check mark. Go back to fillet and add it on the outside edges. and now you have your detail feature. What we're going to do next is mirror the bottle. To mirror it we just select the flat face on the back side, find the mirror icon on the lower left, and we want bodies to mirror. Not features, not faces, you want bodies. So select the bodies tab here, the lower left. Select the geometry on the screen and hit OK. And now we've created the, the bulk of our bottle. The next thing we want to do is we want to create the neck of the bottle. So it, this is probably a good time to save what you have. Just go to File, Save, and save this as Exercise or E13. When finished saving, select the top face of the bottle and start a sketch. Take your circle tool, locate the center, drag out a circle, add your dimensions. If you're following along in the manual, you could use the dimensions given. We'll make this 0.75. And then we can locate that, the center point, to the origin. If we go normal to, we could actually select the origin and locate it with a dimension of 0.5 in this case. Now we'll extrude this. And let's extrude it approximately a half inch, 0.5. And let's proceed to put the thread on the bottle. To add a thread, 
you select this face and then go to the plane wizard the lower left under reference geometry if you click on that you'll find plane you select plane and you want to offset a plane by 0.2 hit the reverse button to get a preview update this is so we could actually have an offset so the thread doesn't start at the very tip of the bottle, starts a little bit below that. In this case, I'm actually going to reset mine to point 0.1, so that looks a little, little too far. And then hit the green check mark. The next step is to select this top face and start a sketch. And hit the convert entities right away while the face is still selected. Convert entities is on the lower right. And actually, I made a mistake here. Let's uh, undo that. Hit rebuild. What I meant to do is select the plane, the new plane that we created. So select the plane and start a sketch. Now you could select the top face of the bottle. Hit convert entities. And it should project the edges of that face onto your new sketch plane. And this edge, the circle, is what we're going to use for our helix. So now we go to Insert, Curve, Helix, Spiral. Select Helix. And you'll notice a helix can be defined by pitch and revolution, height and revolution, height and pitch, or a spiral. A spiral is a two-dimensional curve. It's similar to a heater coil plate that you would find on an electric stove. But uh, in this case, we want to define it by the pitch and revolution. Um, under the pitch here, we could actually hit reverse direction because you can see it was actually creating the geometry upwards. Now we want that reversed. And we actually want to reduce the pitch. So in this case, again, you could follow the instructions of the manual for what the pitch should be set at. I will set this at 0.125. And the number of revolutions, I'll set to 2. The start angle depends on the XY coordinates. If you want to start it at 90, you'll see that it is actually in the Y, it starts at the top in the, in the Y direction. And we could hit the green check mark. But before we leave, also here, just so you notice, you can notice you can make it counterclockwise or clockwise, keep it at clockwise, and you can also add a taper. In this case, we don't want a taper, but taper is typically useful for like a national pipe thread or something like that. So hit your green check mark to apply this. Now, the next stage is to, let's hide the plane, right click on the plane and hide it. Select near the end point of the curve or the helix here. Not on it. Don't select the end point, select near it. Click and then click on your pencil icon on the right for the sketch. It will automatically start a new sketch plane perpendicular to the curve. And we could now go normal to select the plane. And now, again, you could follow the instructions of the manual to draw the geometry. In this case, draw the geometry so it actually intersects just a little bit into the solid. As you can see here, I have a little bit of an offset. I believe there's actually a dimension given. You could dimension between these two. And then add the other dimensions. I'm going to actually add some sketch fillets while I'm here of 0 0.03 and then 0 0.01. Again, the manual is a little bit different, but you could add whatever you prefer. And now, I'm going to hit Rebuild. Now we're ready to create our sweep. We go to Sweep Boss Base, select the profile, and in this case, it appears that I don't have a closed curve, so I'm going to edit that sketch by right-clicking on it. And we'll take a look again at what might be going on here. It's possible that I have a little opening or a gap. And sure enough, actually, it's not a gap as so much as it's an extra line. There is a tool for checking for these things. 
and it's under tools and it's check and actually I'm sorry it's not it's a uh, tools sketch tools and check sketch for feature in this case we'll select it as a base extrude just as a generic check and sure enough as we hit the check we actually get some information it says the sketch cannot be used because the feature shares an endpoint and you can see it highlights the feature so you could just hit OK there and hit the delete key and it will actually delete that extra feature sometimes you might not want to delete it but in this case we do now let's go ahead and try it we can now go to rebuild sweep boss base select the profile and the path and we have our geometry created now. Now you might notice that the image is somewhat faceted. To remove the facets, which looks kind of like a diamond here, that's under the tools and options. And from here you want to go ahead and go to performance and go to image quality and right here you can see shaded and draft quality right now set to low let's grab this little bar and drag it closer to the right notice this says higher and slower you can see by moving it back and forth it reduces the detail or it increases it we want to increase this and once we hit OK you'll see that it should look nice and clean now no longer do you see all the facets okay finally let's create the lead-in of the thread. That's a nice transition into here. So we'll select this face on the end, start a sketch, and just hit the Convert Entities tool. The next thing you want to do is select the center line tool. Drag out a center line and let's uh, follow horizontal here. And now you could select the revolve boss base. And you can see what it's doing is actually revolving around the center line. We didn't actually give a dimension to the center line. And actually an optimal thing with, to do would have been to make this line somehow parallel to this. Unfortunately, this edge here is a spline, so it would have to be deleted. And then we could actually draw a line and make those two parallel and then set a distance at them. But for the sake of the time here, I'm going to leave it as is. And what we can do, we could hit the green check mark and now we have a transition and we'll just repeat the same thing on the other side here I'll select this face and start a sketch hit convert entities and I will actually this time do it the correct way I'll select this geometry on the bottom hit delete select the line tool and proceed to draw a line over it to ensure that's a straight line versus a spline which it might have generated now we could select the center line tool right up here and we'll actually just we will not lock in horizontal here we'll vary off just a little and then we'll hit escape and hold control and select both the center line and the line and make those parallel now you could add a dimension between the two and the larger the dimension, the bigger the transition. So in this case, let's make it 0.125. Hit rebuild. And now we'll go to Revolve Boss Base. And there's our transition. Okay, at this point, you could finish it off with maybe a little fillet at the very bottom edge of the neck and now we can try and shell it. Shelling may, you may not always be successful. If you actually follow my instructions to the T on the manual, all the dimensions are there. You should be able to shell it at I believe either 100 thousandths or 60 thousandths wall thickness. Otherwise it will be very difficult with these features in here to actually shell it. We could try it though. We'll select this face at the top, go to the shell command and we'll put in 0.06 
and in this case it tells us that it's not within the minim minimum radius of curvature. So we'll cancel out and if you really want you could go back and suppress some of these features like the cuts that we have and recess and as well as most likely it's this area here that is causing the problems, the threads. Um, but we could set this even lower and try it. In this case that's not acceptable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rollback bar, a little time machine here, at the very bottom, grab it with the left mouse button and drag it above the sweeps. So we no longer have that feature in there. And let's try it now. We'll select the face, go to shell, and 0.06. We still have some issues. It may be because of some of the features here. Again, some of those features might be better off removed earlier. In this case, let's try 0.03, and I'm just not getting it. Anyway, this concludes the lesson. In class, I'll try and go through and show you methods of getting that, that in there ahead of time before all the features go in. But that is about it. You're now finished with your bottle. Save it as exercise 13.